Hello and welcome to this tutorial video on Hashcat brute force or mask attack password cracking. Hybrid dictionary and combinator attacks, which I've already covered, will crack the majority of passwords. But what about the remainder, the so-called last 20%? Well, this is where we look at brute force or mask attack, which is capable of cracking nearly all passwords, but the limiting factor is time. Yes, will it take a few seconds or millennia? to crack a password. Well, that's based on the length and the character set you're going to give it, because brute force could simply be like, A, 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 B, A, 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 C, etc. <laughs> so you're going to literally try all those combinations to try and guess a password. The basic command with hashcat is hashcat A3, that's attack type 3, dash M is the hash set you have, just look at the man page or any of my previous videos for that information. The hashes file and then the mask you're going to use. The first line covers a two character password. And in the next example, I've added dash i, which is increment. So that covers everything up to three characters. So it'll do all one character, all two characters, then all three characters. So it literally follows the mask along. There's a selection of built-in character sets you can choose from. So you've got lowercase, uppercase, digits, hexadecimal, hexadecimal and uppercase, symbols, all of the above, and you can build your own as well. So you can choose specific characters or you can choose any of the character sets from above. An example command for using custom mask sets. So let's say dash one, we can have a lowercase p or uppercase p, dash two, s or dollar, dash three, zero or O, and you might be able to guess the word I'm trying to write here, so that is password, with a digit at the end. So that will find the following words, or the following passwords. You can only choose up to four different character sets with Hashcat. But if you're going to go all out and choose from all character combinations, then realistically I've found seven characters is doable fairly easily. So on my system, this is using an NTLM hash set with two NVIDIA GTX 1060 graphics cards. That'll take about an hour and a half. But as you add additional characters, it becomes exponentially harder. So eight characters goes up to five days and 22 hours. But as you may have found so far with password cracking, people are predictable. And when told to make a password consisting of uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, symbols, most people will do this an uppercase letter at the beginning, followed by lowercase letters, followed by a couple of digits, and a symbol, or four digits in a symbol. So we can take that information and build a tighter mask set. So in this example I'm trying to crack eight characters, and that's going to take me a grand total of three seconds. Well that's just a little bit shorter than five days. Another item of predictability is some people like to put the current year at the end of their password. So for another example password requirement, we have 12 or more characters, no character set is specified, but people still fall back to using their default of an uppercase letter at the beginning, followed by seven lowercase letters and four digits, four fixed digits being 2018. And that is the mask set for the above example. So we have a 12 character password being brute forced in 16 seconds. Yeah, that's not 12 characters. That password's eight characters. When people are that predictable, it is a massive detriment to the security of a corporate environment. But even if staff are a bit smarter and don't just use the current year, they may well use four digits at the end. And this is where Hashcat is a little bit smarter than just simply trying, let's say, 000, 001, 002. Now it actually tries certain character combinations first. So it tries one, two, three, four then four zeros, four ones, four twos, etc. then 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Yeah, it kind of goes a bit more of a smarter way and tries to get the most obvious password first. But with that mask, I now have jumped to one day and 21 hours, which still isn't bad going considering that is a 12 character password. Something that people may think would take years to crack, but no, it's still quite realistic because people are predictable. But let's move on and look at a different program. The Password Analysis Cracking Kit. This is an item that is pre-installed in Kali Linux, but you can get it from GitHub and that address. And it gives us the programs StatsGen, MaskGen, and PolicyGen. 
This is the readme file about it, and it states that the toolkit itself is not able to crack passwords, but instead is designed to make operation of password crackers more efficient. The first program I'll explain is StatsGen, and it can be used to analyze your currently found passwords and then build masks from it using MaskGen. And the command is StatsGen, your currently found passwords, then output stats.txt. This is an example output based on the file I was working on. And I can see that most people have chosen 12 character or eight character or 13 character. Uh, one poor person chose a 21 character, however, it was 21 predictable characters. We've got a character set, yeah. It specifies some useful information, and if you wanted, you could go up to management and say, this is how predictable our users are. We need to do something to enforce a certain policy. The output of stats gen can be passed across to mask gen, and you can generate a selection of masks to use in Hashcat. So I've gone for an example here. Now, dash PPS is passwords per second. That's something for my system, and you don't actually have to use that at all. It just helps if you're going to use dash T, which is a time. So I'm going to crack for two days at the rate of 14 trillion passwords per second. The min length and max length are optional. So I specified an output of masks.hcmask, and that is the input file of stats.txt. Maskgen has unfortunately exceeded the target time, but not by too much, it's two days and three hours it is predicting. And based on my known passwords, it will give me a coverage of 43%. And that is an example of the output of the maskgen file. So that literally is a selection of masks that Hashcat can use. So it's gone for the most predictable and easy first although I would say it's probably leaned more on the side of easy first. And in order to use it in Hashcat, you could just specify Hashcat attack type 3, so that is the same as what we've had so far. The hash type, well that's up to you. The hashes file, and then the mask.hc mask. The difference this time to what we've seen before is we have a guess queue. An advantage of using the mask file is you could start and stop based on this known queue point. If you're simply using question mark A, question mark A, question mark A, etc., then you're not easily going to be able to know where it has start and stopped. You could also split the queue across between multiple machines. Anyway, that's an advantage of using a mask file compared to just a set pattern or like all characters. Looking at one of the other programs in the pack toolkit, policy gen, that can be used to find non-compliant passwords in the corporate environment. For example, a nine character password gives 262,144 masks and will take more than one year to crack. But how realistic is it that someone will have, say, six symbols and three numbers as their password, and it be in that combination there with a digit at the beginning, followed by six symbols and two, and two digits at the end? Well, if that's your password, well done, that's probably not going to be very guessable. And policy gen can exclude these unlikely masks. So for example, a realistic selection could give you 28,246 masks, which will take 16 days and 18 hours to crack. That is considerably shorter than one year. And this was the example I was going for. So I've actually specified a maximum number of special characters being one, the maximum number of uppercase letters being two, and the maximum number of digits as being four. And that is the syntax of the command. All of the arguments there are optional, but you can specify the passwords per second based on your system, the minimum and maximum password lengths, the minimum and maximum number of lowercase letters, the minimum and maximum number of uppercase letters, the minimum and maximum number of digits, the minimum and maximum number of symbols, and dash O is the output file. I have found PolicyGen an exceptionally useful tool in being able to find non-compliant passwords in the corporate environment. And while there is the possibility of missing some passwords, sometimes you just have to go for the most realistic and fastest to find first. That is how to do a brute force attack in Hashcat. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.